Okay, hey everyone, so this video has taken me like six tries to shoot. I've been trying to record this in the past, but the subject matter is actually pretty difficult for me to explain because there's so much depth and I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, also, I haven't been making videos lately because I've been really busy with uh, school midterms, three secret projects, and other things. And I have some really cool videos coming up. So, um, I think my schedule frees up in about a week or two and then I can do cool stuff again. So, this is going to be a hybrid method between ZZC, which is ZZOLS, with CT. They're both the same amount of steps, and if we think about it, CT is a half step between ZZ, normal ZZ, and ZZC. It all, it uses the best orientation steps of ZZC, and uses a special permutation step. The closest analog is ZZB and ZZA, but that's different because there's an extra half step, whereas in CT and C, there is no half step. Um, but in ZZB, you do all the edges, and then you do your slot while doing the edges, and then you do ZBLL, and it's only half the amount of algs. And ZBLL is just learning every case for the last layer. So ZZC is, you learn all of the slot last slot algorithms that solve OLL at the same time, and CT is its own unique thing, which is similar, but not exactly the same. And just to illustrate that, um, I'm just going to do a solve on this random cube. And if I don't get a C case that I know, I'll just uh, force one. So I just did uh, F2L minus 1. Now. I don't think I know this one. Oh wait, I do know this one. So it's just that, and you see how I did F2L and OLL at the same time? And you might just say it's a skip, and CT skips one out of five times. Well, ZZC skips all the time, and it's around the same amount of algs as ZBLL. The algs are actually already basically optimized. Recognition is stupidly simple. Um, I use a special uh, style because in CT you have a different reference, but recognition is just like F2L and you just look at orientation at the same time. It's stupidly simple, but the problem is there are bad cases. In fact, there are some cases that are just ridiculous and pretty much stupid. But I thought about it some more and realized if you use a hybrid between the bad cases of... if you combines ZZC with CT and whenever you have a bad C case you use CT you can avoid all of those bad things altogether and have a method that has a ridiculous skip chance so one out of 72 times that's the same amount as a PLL skip um, for obvious reasons after you do the last slot you finish the cube completely which is an absurd percentage and if you saw my um, other video about how I got like um, I think I was doing practice solves and I got like a 7. Um, that was uh, an example of that. Um, the statistics are really high and OLS is really powerful. In fact, ZZC OLS is what got me my low 8 at one of my last comps. And after that comp I was going to shoot this video, but explaining this is a lot of words. Um, and what better way to explain than to show you. So this is a C case that takes like 12 or 13 moves. Um, uh, let me try to pull it up. I intentionally didn't learn this case. So, um, you can see that this is in the bottom, which is correctly permuted, and this is, uh, the orientation of the pieces. Ag. So, to do this with ZZC, um, well, obviously, to backtrack a little bit, with if you're using normal ZZ, you would build the pair, you would get a U O L L, then you have to do the O L L, then P L L. Um, with Z B L L, you do just pair these two. But pairing these two, it's like, um, let me try to set this up. So if you're pairing these two, you would have to use one, two, three, four, five, six moves into O L L. I'm just gonna do this Z B L L, but um, it's six moves. 
into an OLL which is also like 7 moves and then PLL which can be between like 12, 14, 16 moves, whatever. Um, if you're doing ZZZ for C for this case, it's 12 moves, which is not good. This is one of the bad cases, so I'm going to show you what the ALG is. So, I think it's this way. I hope it's this way. Yeah, this way. Um, and that did orientation. And then after that, I had an end perm. So that was not a good way of solving the cube. Like I said, ZZC has its downfalls, but when you combine it with CT, this is the same case. It's three moves. It's just R, U prime, R prime to get to TTLL. And then from there, it's solved um, after you do TTLL. And that's the powerful thing. It just so happened, randomly happened, that all of the bad C cases are good CT cases. So all of the CT cases that are just R U R prime or R U prime R prime or even R U two R prime, the simple one or two trigger inserts, they're actually whole groups of C cases that aren't so good. And all of the rest of them that are good, they intertwine perfectly with CT. So it's gonna be between two hundred to three hundred algs, less because it's actually like a tree kind of like OBL with square one it's actually just a tree of triggers it's all 2 gen in some cases the RUD is really nice so the algs are nice recognition is good and now that we've solved the problem of bad cases I think this is gonna be an amazing method and it's not gonna be super consistent because you'll be up and down but it is more consistent than CT and it still gives you good singles in fact it gives you better singles because the probability of you getting the whole cube solved after the last slot is like I said 1 out of 72 which is amazing but it gets crazier that's not all there is to this method and if you're listening this far um, here's an even cooler part okay so here's a randomly hand scrambled cube I will here's EO line after line square and then my next square square and you'll see after that square I'm at my third slot sometimes in ZZ an edge will be put in the correct spot and sometimes the corner will also be correct let me uh, switch that out so and if that corner is not an F2L corner you can just do OLS from the third slot and then you're gonna go straight into your last step TTLL and this is an example of how CT and C complement each other because if you knew all of ZZC and all of OLS but you didn't know TTLL you would still have to do that slot but because you know TTLL you can skip a slot and go straight into the last step and it's really simple from here I just have to do the uh, alg for this which I don't know so I'm gonna have to do a different one um, here I can look it up but from here um, I'm gonna do this alg on this piece of paper and I'm just gonna go straight into TTLL so just like that I have skipped an F2L slot and from here the cube is solved and this is just a really powerful method because if you can recognize that the edge is in place which is not that rare you can skip slots consistently just by using this OLS I think that this is a really powerful hybrid method and for me personally um, I used to be really good at memorizing algs but now I don't have a lot of time I'm gonna be investing a lot of time into doing this because a lot of my PB's were set using this method like the 7 on video and that 8.2 in competition um, I think OLS is the future especially even CFOP users can learn the nice cases in fact Patrick Ponce he knows a lot of OLS he was actually showing me some cases just being able to skip OLL gives you such a powerful skip chance for PLL and OLS is practically optimized at this point if it doesn't have an R a nice short 2 gen solution it has a nice RUD or R lowercase u like R lowercase u R prime case so uh, that's pretty much it
Uh, thank you as always for watching my videos, and hopefully I'll have cooler stuff in the future for everyone. So, see you next time.